Push offers a fun and creative way to record ideas by using the step sequencer mode. Notes and chords can be added to specific sections of a loop idea which are called steps. Harmonies and melodies can be created through small trial and error programming steps and you can even switch between step sequencer mode and note mode at any point in the process. So let's have a look at the step sequencer in detail to understand how it works. The default mode for playing notes using push is the note mode, where notes and chords can be recorded in key using the pads. If you're not familiar with recording notes in the note mode, please refer to the earlier videos of the Learn Push series. The note mode button allows you to toggle the step sequencer mode on and off. Push reconfigures the layout of the 64 pads to add notes or chords in steps. The bottom row of pads in opaque blue represents the root note of the particular scale. In this case, it's C major, so the root note is C. The next six pads above the root note row of pads represent the next six notes in the scale. To create a melodic sequence, simply press the pads to start the sequence loop idea. The play position indicator in green goes from left to right, indicating the playing position of the current sequence. So each pad in a row represents a single step in the sequenced idea. The very top row of pads represents the loop length section of my sequenced idea. The grid buttons on the side can be used to set the resolution of the steps. The default resolution is 1 16th. In the loop length section, the moving green position indicator cycles through the pads showing me where I am in my loop idea. I can press a pad in the loop length section once to stay on that page for note editing and this pad will indicate this by having a light yellow colour. The sequence will continue to play through but I will not be able to see the notes in the rest of the loop. If I want to loop just a section of my sequenced idea, I can double tap a pad in the loop length section. This pad will be highlighted in green and only this section of sequence steps will be looped as can be seen by the play position indicator. To regain the whole loop length, I can select the original loop again by pressing the starting and ending pads simultaneously. The octave up and down buttons can be used to reach higher or lower octaves or the touch strip can also be used to find notes in a different octave range. By pressing the double button, I can double the length of my step sequence as can be seen in the loop length section. Finally, I can also enter the scales mode to access other scales to use with the step sequencer. or I can toggle the in-key mode button to use a chromatic scale with the step sequencer. Please note that if the scale is changed, this will not affect the current step notes of the playing sequence. It is also possible to step sequence chords using push. You can simply press several pads in the same column to create a chord. The length of individual notes or chords can be extended to any length by simply holding down a pad or several pads to access the note editing features visible in the display. Use the encoders above the display to dial in the right note length you require using the coarse and fine adjustment. In addition to adjusting the note length, you can also nudge notes from their grid position and adjust the velocity of notes. By pressing the duplicate button, I can copy the current idea I have for further editing or create a variation of my idea. Since all the notes are recorded as steps, I know the exact position of each note and they can be easily changed or I can try out different step positions of the same note. So now you understand how the step sequencer mode works, let's have a look at step automation of live instrument and effect parameters 
in the next Learn Push video tutorial.